Charles Crow, Mickey Neighborhood Board. Charles Mike, Downtown Neighborhood Board. Burton Arena, Neighborhood Board 5. Right, Gibson, Oahu, MPO. Mike Deloitte, First thing on the agenda is approval of minutes. Any corrections to the minutes? If not, I need a motion. Motion for approval. Second. Back here, right? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Wow. Fantastic. Next thing we have is the Joint Traffic Management Center. Mike? Yeah. Uh, Mike Formby. Everybody knows Mike. <laughs> Actually, it's a team today. It's Mike Formby and Ty Fukumitsu. Does everybody know Ty? Yeah. 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 If you haven't met Ty, Ty is a long-standing employee of DTS. He's chief of the Traffic Signal and Technology Division. So he oversees the 12 technicians and electricians that maintain our 850 signalized intersections 24 7. He oversees the construction of the Joint Traffic Management Center and he oversees the current operation of the Traffic Management Center. And he and I just came from the Traffic Management Center. We had an interview with Honolulu Magazine, who's doing an article on congestion, traffic congestion, and our efforts to mitigate congestion. So we had a long discussion about the benefits to the community that will come from Joint Traffic Management Center. We're here to talk about it today. Ty's got a short slideshow, I think about 10 slides. And then we've got these architectural renderings, if you haven't seen these. They're not too big, I'll pass them around. They're just two perspectives of what the building's going to look like. It is under construction, and if you go to the Honolulu Gov website, on the very first page where it scrolls across, there's JTMC, and if you click it, it gives you a current photo of the construction. So we're basically allowing people to see the construction of the building 24-7, 365 days a year. You can watch it being built. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's the first time we've done that for, for active construction. But um, look at these, ask questions, please. We're here to, to tell you as much as we can about the building. There are some areas of the operations that are secure because we have first responders in there, but we're available to answer any questions you have, hopefully. Okay, thanks. Ty, go ahead. Okay. Good afternoon, everyone. Again, my name is Ty Fukumitsu. Um, hey, Joe. I knew Joe. I won't say how long. Many years. Don't say how long. <laughs> I think I was still in teens. Maybe. Anyway, I knew Joe very long. And I, I'm not in teens right now. I'm way past that. Anyway, I'd like to present to you our Joint Traffic Management Center. I see some new faces here, so I kind of want to give a quick overview briefing on where it is and what and okay. what we did so far. So, this is the original project site of our Joint Traffic Management Center. It's located kind of like right across Fosse Municipal Building. It's in this area, here's Alapai Street, King Street right here. This is where the old bus facility used to be. This is kind of like a blown up shot of what we used to have there. It was a old, it's a, it was a, oh, not was, it's a transit center. Uh, it's a piece of property that was owned by DTS, very underutilized, and we decided hey, this would be a perfect location for the Joint Traffic Management Center. So the first thing we did is we did a JTMC site plan. Mm -hmm. And if you see, this is the parking garage, and that's already built in conjunction with the transit center. So here you have the Alapai Transit Center with the bus stops, the bus enters through here, stages under under the garage area and when it's ready to pick up its passengers it goes out to the various bus stops that is complete already uh, what it is what we're doing right now is actually building the JTMC or joint traffic management center so here's the building footprint this is what we call a service yard this is where the air conditioning units are going to be uh, backup generators and all those other things a few tanks um, 
Okay, and then we have this various landscaping in the area. Because we are in the capital district, it's a special capital district that we have to maintain uh, greenery within the area. Oops. So <clears throat> just a little picture of our parking garage, our existing parking garage, as, as I mentioned, the bus um, stages in the parking garage. This is King, is taken right, this is King Street right here. So I'm across King Street, we took that picture. Uh, and right now we do have you know, uh, vehicles and people parking in the parking garage. For the JTMC, for the building itself, the one that we are developing, uh, it, as Mike mentioned, we have our first responders in there. So we have our partners or occupants of the JTMC. First will be DTS, traffic signals. We will be there, all our traffic cameras, all the things that we can do right now at our current traffic management center, we're going to move it all over to this new joint traffic management center. What's different is we're going to have our counterpart there, State Department of Transportation. State Department of Transportation has cameras. Uh, many of you may or may not know they do have cameras, especially, especially along the H3 and various parts of the freeway. So we're going to incorporate their cameras along with our cameras to one centralized location. and. You know, we can communicate as transportation people. We can, we're can there together. We don't have to call each other over the phone <laughs> to coordinate. Along with that, we have our first responders. Honolulu Fire Department, Emergency Services Division, and Honolulu Police Department. It's all the communication dispatchers. That's what's going to be at the Traffic Management Center. So all the information we get from the public, all the 911 calls, all of the information will be at the Joint Traffic Management Center for all of us to, so it's one centralized location so all of us can get that information. Along with that, we have our bus system, OTS. They have a council at the Joint Traffic Management Center and part. Okay. So during emergencies or events where we need, um, we need them, they'll be able to come into the Joint Traffic Management Center and be part of this big coordination. Of course, you know, having a building is one thing, but we do need a support team. Everything needs a support. Our facility maintenance will help, will help us maintain and operate, maintain this building, uh, fix the air conditioning system, make sure the elevators are working, the lights turn on, we need to, we need to turn on. And our Department of Information Technology, it's all high, tech, high technology, high tech. It has to be all linked together using computer systems, servers. So this is where our DIT partner comes in. Now. Before we start, when we developed this Joint Traffic Management Center, we developed two memorandum of agreement. This is before we even started construction. First one was we call Active Traffic Management. Um, this is a joint agreement between city and state. And I say city and state, I know I mentioned a lot of other agencies there. They are part of this agreement. It's just that the police, the fire, the EMS, heart, and <clears throat> and OTS, they're actually part of the city, right? So that's why I said there's city and state. And basically, we all agreed that we're going to develop and implement plans for active traffic management type of procedure. Right now, we really don't do active traffic management. We do, pro, we do, we do responsive management. And I'll come back to this later. So it went to city council. It was adopted. Our second memorandum of agreement is for the design, construction, and commissioning of the building itself, known as the Joint Traffic Management Center. And again, it's between city and state, because state is our partners, <clears throat> um, to develop the JTMC by committing resources. In other words, everyone has a hand in this. It's not DTS's building. It's not only for fire. It's for all of our first responders, we want to make it in a group where we all are together and collaborating. So this is, a, this is basically what the memorandum of agreement number two says. And again, it has been presented to city council and adopted by city council. Okay. Now remember our first memorandum of agreement, on um, active traffic management. We want to start to actively managing traffic. Right now, we are responsive. In other words, when there's an accident, or for example, like the zipper lane, the zipper lane, you know, didn't 
getting it un getting closed, we're we reactive to it. We didn't plan ahead. We see what's happening to the traffic. We adjusted the timing. We sent out alerts, but we weren't react. We were reactive. We want to be proactive or active. For example, if there is graduations, you know, three graduations going on in the same area. We know traffic congestion is going to be really bad because all these high schools are graduating. <laughs> Families are going to come to the graduation. So what is traffic going to be like? We want to plan ahead. We want our partners there, police, right? Police needs to be there to make sure we can keep traffic flowing. Doing emergencies, we want to make sure if our vehicles can get to a fire, our EMS vehicles. So this is all the proactive part of planning we want to do in the JTMC. And because we're going to be located together, at the JTMC, this is possible. In fact, on the JTMC floor, we have this thing called a bridge. A bridge is where all of the basically supervisors from each section, fire, police, EMS, state, including us, transportation, can meet and plan ahead of time on what we're going to do. Instead of waiting for something to happen, we are implementing things before it occurs. Oh, I kind of skipped this slide, but basically that's what it, this is what this slide says, that we all will collaborate together. Okay. Now, because we're working on all of this, we need to get the construction going. And so we took our building out to bid. We had five bidders. The lowest bidder was Watts Construction. Uh, the price came out to $53.6 million, well, and it was within budget right away. So if it's within budget, we do have sufficient funds, federal funds and city funds to cover the cost. Federal Highways is actually putting up a little more than 50% of the cost to build this building. There is no way we could have done this without our shell partners, Federal Highways. So with all that given, we actually issued notice to proceed for the construction of this building on April 20th <coughs> this year, so it's pretty recent. They have 730 calendar days to complete this. That's basically two years to complete the building. As Mike brought up, we do have our we do have a live shot. We do have a website that shows the construction of the building. So if you guys, are, if anyone's interested, please go to the site. You can actually see them installing right now the dust fence around the building. That little wooden fence that you see going out. It's pretty neat. Um, well, I like to watch it because I like to see make sure the contractor's working and make sure they have all the equipment there. Uh, but, you know, for it's something new that we've never done before, you know, see how a building is built and show it live to the public. It's not a streaming video, it's, it's a snapshot. It takes a picture, right now it takes a picture every 30 minutes. Okay? Morning, noon, and night. So at nighttime it might be a little dark until the contractor puts security lights but it does take a picture and it will show up on the website. Uh, Mike is passing around some renderings we have from the Joint Traffic Management Center, but I like, you know, it might be easier if everyone sees it up in front. So if you're looking at King Street, kind of angled from King Street at Alapai, looking at the Traffic Management Center, this is kind of like what you're gonna see, the trees, the building. The building is actually a three-story building. The first floor is basically where we have all our uh, meeting rooms, our data center, and some, uh, some small offices. Second floor is the brain of the building. This is where everything's going to happen. Uh, this is the, what we call the operations floor, where the police, fire, EMS, state, and city will be together, along with OTS and HART, our councils. We have this big video wall. Uh, the floor itself is not your typical single-story uh, floor because there's a lot of information that we need to display on a video wall. That second floor floor is actually two and a half floors tall. So it's a, it's a tall floor. <coughs> and on the third floor, we do have offices for um, DTS, our state counterparts, and some of HPD. Now, inside this, along with uh, our state partners, State is also bringing the freeway service patrol. Everyone knows who that are, right? Mm -hmm. The freeway service patrol, they're coming along with state into this building. So if there's any kind of stalled vehicles, accidents, incidents, or whatever you need to do, because you're gonna be
co-located with police, fire, and everyone, we can coordinate what the Seaway, what the Seaway Freeway Service Patrol is to do. As you notice, during accidents or stalled vehicles, the Freeway Service Patrol actually cones the freeway to help channelize the traffic to make traffic flow better. Now with our cameras and our partners, hopefully we can make that happen a lot sooner and be proactive on things. So this is another view from Alapai Street. So if, you look, if you're in Alapai looking at this big empty lot, this is what you're gonna see. And this is actually the front entrance. This is the front entrance to the Joint Traffic Management Center. It is a secured building. So you can't just walk in there, okay? And it's because we have our first responders and there's a lot of sensitive information that may be going around. But <coughs> you, people are welcome. We do have meeting rooms. You, may ha you will have to go to security, but you know, it, can, it, it is open. Okay? And another view from our hotel street. That little driveway you see is the existing driveway that the bus exits out from our transit center. Uh, this is the what we call back of the building, the brown fence you see on the left that kind of hides all of our generators, the, the fuel tanks, so, so you don't see this unslightly what we call back of house, uh, back, back of house of the Joint Traffic Management Center. Uh, that was my last slide. I know it's short, but it's a quick update, um, and I'm quite sure many of you have some questions. Yes. <coughs> Little logo you had up in the corner. Is that an owl? Oh. What is that? Very good. What was the Identify question? yourself when we ask the question, please. Barbara Armand Trout, Neighborhood Board 5. Okay, so that. Up there. In the development of our Joint Traffic Management Center, because we have all these different agencies, right? City and state here. Uh, and we wanted to make it uniform. We wanted cohesive. We wanted to be a team together. So we all decided, hey, why not develop a logo for the Joint Traffic Management Center? You know, it's, it encompasses everyone. There's no one in particular. So what we came out, and it took months to do this. <laughs> <laughs> Don't get me wrong. If you think, oh, you know, it actually took months. And I want to say it's close to like eight months, to give you an idea. But the owl represents, uh, you know, Overseen for every wisdom. No. It is an owl. It is an owl. It represents wisdom from our traffic cameras. We can see the traffic. So the owl is overseen. We can see them. If you look real closely, count the number of lines on the feathers. Okay. Each line represents <coughs> a oh. department. Yeah. There's police, fire, EMS, State Department of Transportation, and City and County Department of Transportation. Uh, what is really hard to see, and this is actually on the bottom, is actually a road. Oh. Yes, it's actually a road because it's to guide everyone. Yes, <laughs> it's to guide everyone to their destinations and to get them there safely. Can I have one? Linda. Oh, okay. I I got several questions, but I, I'm, I'm just going to give ask a couple of them, but. One of the tenants, uh, you said that you're going to try to coordinate so that if if there's a graduation, then you're going to have something. Now, when it isn't there an enterprise department that that has uh, track of all the, the different you know permits and whatnot, so you know Kalakaua is going to uh, going to be coned off for for four hours or whatnot, or the zoo is going to have something. So wouldn't it be appropriate to have the planning office, you know, for those types of events, you know, like, hey, you know, uh, Japanese golden month is here and so we need to oh, adjust for the traffic. Cool. See, that input seems to be missing from this overall planning. Okay. Okay, then my, my other question, okay. Could you synchronize things? Okay, you have input from the from the state DOT mm -hmm. as to uh, the sequencing of the timing of the traffic lights. Say, for example, Kalanan Oli on East Oahu. Could you know you watch that and synchronize it because there's numerous times where you think that there's an accident or a broken water main, 
and the only problem is that the lights were not synchronized for, for, for the main uh, the main flow of traffic. It's synchronized for the for the wrong direction. Let Myra. I'm sorry, Myra. What do you say? No, the tool truck is here. Somebody has a van parked on the street. I just wanted to make sure it's nobody here because the tool truck is here. Oh, um, a on the no, street. No, on the street, though. No. King Street. It would be King Street. It shouldn't be on the street because it's tollway. 230 is tollway. The tollway, yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. Marsha, you, you are parked in the middle of the road. No. No. Okay. So you have two parts to your question. First of all is event planning. For example, like parade. I assume you're talking like parades, block parties, those, those kind of events. So right now, those permits is actually issued by um, DTS. Actually, it kind of falls under me. So it, it really helps because we issue those permits and we do coordinate those permits with changing of the traffic signals. Um, that's one of the few, in fact, that's the only thing that we are proactive for, pre-planning. We meet with police, we meet with the organizers, we plan the closure route, we plan the time, we plan the detours of the traffic, we plan the counterflow of various roadways so we can maintain access to various hotels. So that is pre-planned, and we're doing that now, and that, and that is part of this joint traffic yeah. management center. So that, that's what I want to know, because there was one time at the Blaze Cell, they had something at the convention hall, something at the, the concert hall, and, and they had something else. And it was a high draw. I mean, there was absolutely zero parking, and that the buses were right. slow. I mean, you know, it, uh, it's that entity allowed to input your. They do. They In fact, do. they do like today. They, I mean, it, it's more than Blaisdell. Blaisdell, when there's large events such as that, this past, actually was passed this past Saturday. weekend. Saturday. Um, um, they let us know that, hey, we have this big event, we have a concert, we have also a uh, Fitness thing. Uh, they had a, yes, yeah, this spa, uh, this uh, bodybuilding. Some kind of bodybuilding. Yeah. Anyway, you know, they had a lot uh, of things happening at the same time, and they expected, especially when a concert lets out at a certain time, that the, there's a major traffic flow coming out. Mm -hmm. So they let us know on that, and we do preset the traffic signal timing to that. In addition to that, convention center, when they have large conventions, for example, the upcoming conventions, the Lions Convention, mm -hmm. they let us know, hey, you know, we have a Lions Convention. Estimated this crowd, this is about the time they're going to be here, this is about the time they're going to finish. Right. So we do adjust the lights for that too around the convention center you to you help them. have 30 them buses to get people from the hotels. Well, oh, trust me, the line one is going to be more than 30 buses. We, yeah, we yeah, met with yeah, them yeah. already <laughs> to coordinate all of this. So, yes, there's going to be okay. many more Magic buses. So, okay, now, <laughs> I want to know that the, the, the DIT, the Information Technology Center, yes. okay, currently. It's in the basement, subject to flooding. You know, so when you have a, an emergency, like a, like a hurricane or whatnot, and it's subject to flooding. So is this new data center gonna be? It's not gonna replace the DIT's data center, but a lot of the equipment, the radio equipment, mm -hmm. uh, the police uses, and some other equipment, which I, I, I should not mention, <laughs> is gonna be moved to the Joint Traffic Management Center. It's a, it's a more secure building. Yeah. It's not in the basin. It won't flood. It's yeah. up, okay. We do have backup generators, so it will keep on working. In fact, we have redundant backup generators to make sure that we always keep working. Because it's very important that our first responders always have communications with each other. Okay. And then, um, are you synchronizing the technology so the, the state's not using Betamax and the city is using VHS? <laughs> <laughs> We are. In fact, the city, you know, all the traffic signals, regardless if it's owned by state or city, the city maintains and operates all of the traffic signals. So your question you had about synchronization, like on Kalani Only Highway, actually the lights are synchronized. The biggest challenge that we have is on streets that has two-way traffic. Streets like King Street, it's pretty easy to synchronize because you know traffic just flows in one direction, so you can change the lights in one direction. Now, traffic like that flows on, for example, Kapiolani, Kalani Ani Ole Highway, traffic in those areas, they're two-way streets. So we have to be real careful how we do things, because if you synchronize one direction, which is terrific for that, you know, traveling public in that direction, if you're coming from the opposite way, what do you get? You get all red. all red right. lights. Because yeah, it's yeah. desynchronized. So it's a balanced, you know, balanced adjustments to make traffic kind of flow in both directions. So what, you, what the result is, 
you may not flow to all of the intersections, but you may flow to like four or five of them before you have to stop. The same way as the other way. You may flow to four or five of them before you have to stop. It's because we try to find a balance between the two-way traffic. Okay, my last question. I'm looking at the picture. You know Queens Hospital, they had the, they built a generator on uh, the POB one parking garage. Mm -hmm. When they put it, their permit, they were told because they're within the capital district that they had to make the face Hawaiianized. So if you look at the at that building, they they have monstera leaves and whatnot on. When I look at this, you know this thing is just a sterile. <laughs> Yeah, so how how did the how did this joint Oops. building <laughs> have to not there we go. have that Hawaiian look? Really we actually do. We actually, it just doesn't show well in the photos well. that we have, but we have we have a screen on the King Street side that I call the navigator's screen, and it's intended to represent the stars, how the Polynesians would have found their way to the islands. And it doesn't show very well on either of these it. photos, but it does have a cultural theme that follows the parking garage. So if you go over and look at the parking garage, you'll see almost like a tapa mm -hmm. design mm -hmm. on the side. Those elements are incorporated yeah. into the JTMC as well. And yes. they, we had to go through the same permitting that anybody in the Capital Special District goes through. And, and the <laughs> architects that look at it, and they make sure your designs are acceptable. They look at trees, they look at colors, <coughs> they look at everything. Look at sheets. So I know exactly how it developer feels. It's not a real like, big appreciation like to develop. It's a hospital building like that, then, huh? Yeah, oh, so yeah. it went to the same way. So, yeah, you really can't see it, but we do have um, the Hawaiian team uh -huh. on top there. It's a navigation, the Hawaiian okay. navigation team. Okay. Oh, She's my next second then, yes. question, which I didn't get to ask, is when this is built, well, uh, is there going to be like an open house, or would we be able to go in on pole to, to look and see before it? Yes, in fact, we will. Um, would you have like an open house for us to come? Of course, when it's built, of course, there'll be an open house. Uh, visiting other agencies that actually have this kind of type of joint traffic management center. We're not the first one to have a joint center, but we're very unique because we, I think we are the first, first one that incorporates all our first responders okay, into here. There's other states that have joint traffic management center, but they're missing components, like they don't have police. Or they may have state police, but they may not have local police. Mm -hmm. they, may have, they may not have fire in there. Anyway, we have everyone in there. There will be tours available, they're, they're, when police and everybody moves in, there's going to be a restriction on who can go on the operations floor. That's the second floor. Mm -hmm. We can bring you up to the third floor, and we plan this. On the third floor, there's a plexiglass thing right around, so you can see into the operations floor. Oh, okay. yeah, you can walk onto the operations floor because, unfortunately, you're yeah. going to hear a lot of kind of very uh, personal things that um, should not be heard. Mm -hmm. And so we <laughs> ourselves. We ourselves, because I am on the operations floor, we have to go to a FBI background check. Exactly what police has to go to. Anyone on the operations floor has to go to that. So Wampo will have the first tour? <laughs> <laughs> that's what I'm asking. So, the the I'm asking. That's what I'm asking. <laughs> <laughs> we will have a ground, I mean, we had a groundbreaking. Of course, we're going to have a grand opening ceremony, too. Oh, okay. Yes. But, okay. That, that means you're not going to secure the computer? You're going to compute. Oh, you won't be able to go to the data center, but you may go around it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay, we have to get right here. Planner, probably many and you'll probably think frivolous, but is your wonderful joint traffic management plan is going to be through anything on the North Shore for high surf days and for uh, people who are stopping to look at turtles and the usual mess up at the North Shore? So we're all coordinating with Steve with that. On high surf days, in fact, we're kind of coordinating already. Um, oh, what's that? Um, Surf me, um, Eddie uh, Aikau. Eddie Aikau. Eddie Aikau. City actually Eddie does go in with state already. Um, if there's a chance that Eddie Aikau may occur, you know what we do? We put out those barriers on the road yes. to prevent the cars. And it, it's a real good thing because it puts the barriers out, prevents cars, but it actually pro provides a little walkway for pedestrians back there if they want to view the surf. So it makes it safe, safe. for everyone. Mm -hmm. So we're doing things like that. Nixo Alert. Okay, mm -hmm. We may not have cameras over there yet, but we're working with. Will. Others to try to get cameras in the area. Of course, there's no traffic signals in the area, so it's another challenge. Sure. <laughs> and my, second, my second question, question was this comes from 20 years of being a steward. You haven't mentioned anything for the employees. 
cooking, eating, resting, whatever. Mm. Glad you asked. No, 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 no. We have fire.